All right, guys, I'm going to show you a very important concept in mathematics. This concept is called rounding off. Now, rounding off, you're going to be using it throughout high school from year 7 all the way to year 12. In fact, if you don't know how to round off, a lot of the time you're going to make mistakes because a lot of the questions are going to ask you to solve a problem and then round off your answer. If you don't round off your answer, you are going to lose marks, that's for sure. So let's see how to round off. Very important concept to learn and you're going to see it's not hard, but you need to know this concept very, very well. Let's get started. In these questions here, we have an example here, there, there, and there. These examples, the question is saying, round off to the nearest hundred. To the nearest hundred. Okay. We have to follow a rule. The rule is that when we are rounding off to the nearest hundred, we look to the number that's on its right. And we ask that number, are you a five or more? Are you a number that is five or more? If you are a five or more, then we can round up. If you're a number that is less than five, then we have to round down. That's the rule. And that's as simple as that. So when we're looking at the nearest hundred, we look to the number on its right and we ask it this question. Are you five or more? If you are, we're going to round up. If you are less than five, we're going to round down. Let's see what we mean by that. Round off to the nearest hundred. Where is the hundred? There, 362. So we look to the number on its right and we notice this number on the right is there and we ask it the question. Are you five or more? The answer is yes, because this is six. Six is larger than five. So therefore, we can round up. So our answer will be 400. The six had muscles to push the three up and it became a four, 400. So 362 rounded off to the nearest hundred becomes 400. It rounds up because it is five or more. Another example, 753. We're asked to round off to the nearest hundred once again. Then we look to the number on the right of the hundred. The hundred is there. The number on the right is a five. The rule is five or more has enough muscles to push us up. So this number here, yes, it's a five, it's five or more. So it pushes the hundred up. Therefore, 753 rounded up because the five can push it up becomes 800. Another example, 549, we're going to round it off to the nearest hundred. 549, we look at the number on the right of the hundreds column. This is the hundreds. The number on the right is a four. We notice, hang on, this four is less than five. It doesn't have muscles to push us up. So we round down. So it becomes 500 instead of 549. We go down. It doesn't have enough muscles, so we round down. The answer to the nearest hundred is 500. Another example here, 937. Round off to the nearest hundred. This is our hundreds column. We look to the number on the right and we ask, are you five or more? No, not five or more. It's actually less. That means we have to round down. So 937 to the nearest hundred becomes 900. It doesn't have enough muscles to push up, so we have to round down. So as you can see, it's a simple concept. We always look to the number of the right of what we are looking at here. We are looking rounding off to the nearest hundred, round off to the nearest hundred, round off to the nearest hundred, and round off to the nearest hundred. In this case, in these two examples, the number on the right was five or more, so it rounded up. Five or more, it rounded up. The 753 became 800. While in this case, the number on the right of the hundreds column was less than five, so it rounded down. Less than five, so it rounded down from 937 to 900. Some more where we're going to be asked here, round off these large numbers to the nearest million. To the nearest million. Okay, 
So we have here 7 million and 400,000. 7 million, 400,000. We're going to round off to the nearest million. So we look at the millions column. Where is it? There is the millions column. And we said we look to the number to the right of the millions column because we're rounding off to the nearest million. So the number on the right, there it is. And the rule is it has to have or be a number that is five or more for it to have enough muscles to push that up. In this case here, it's a four. So guess what? It's going to round down. So 7,400,000 is going to round down to become 7,000,000. Because the number on the right of the millions column there is actually less than 5. So we round down 7,400,000 becomes 7 million. Another example, see if you can do this one yourself. We're rounding off to the nearest million once again. We have 6,900,000. Which number are we going to look at to see, to ask for help, to push up or down? We're going to look for the number on the right of the million. There's the million. We're going to look for the number on the right. There it is. And we're going to ask, are you 5 or more? Yes, it's a 9, so it's larger than 5. That means we can actually push up. So that becomes... Seven million, as you can see, of course, six zeros. Seven million has been pushed because the nine has enough muscles. It is larger than five or five or more, and it pushed the six, and it became seven million. Six million and nine hundred thousand was rounded off to the nearest million as seven million. Let us do some more examples. The next couple of examples are going to involve decimal places. However, we follow the same concept. We look. Do we have five or more? If we have five or more, we can push up. If we have less than five, we have to round down. Okay, guys. Now, I'm going to show you how to use decimals when we're rounding off. Be careful. As I said earlier on, this is a very important concept. Please pay attention, and you're going to need to practice over and over again. When you're looking at the questions, always be careful. Are they asking you to round off? If they are, you must round off. I've seen too many people make this mistake. They do everything correct. They have a whole page of working out, all perfect, all nice, until the answer, they forget to round off. So let's go and see how to round off. Very important to do that correctly. You'll get full marks in your exam or in your homework. Let's do the first couple on this side. We have 3.36. And the question is saying, round off to the nearest one decimal place to the nearest one decimal place. So the nearest one decimal place is this one here. We want to round off to the nearest one decimal place. And we said, we look to the number on its right. And we ask that number, are you five or more? In this case, yes, 3.36. The six is the number on the right of one decimal place. So the six doesn't have the muscle to push up. Five or more has the muscles to push us up. So yes, we round up becomes 3.4. The 6 pushes the 3 and becomes a 4. 3.4, we've rounded off 3.36 to one decimal place, 3.4. 12.45, once again, round off to one decimal place. So we look for the number on its right. This number here. Can you push us up? Do you have the muscles? Five or more? Yes, I do. So this can push the four and it will be 12 point. The five pushes it up, becomes a five. 12.45 has been rounded off to one decimal place, 12.5. The five has muscles to push it up. It has pushed it up and it became a five. So here we are rounding off to one decimal place. Here, we're going to be asked to round off to two decimal places. Two decimal places, these are the two decimal places. So we look to the one on their right, there it is. 
A U5 or more, in this case, six, uh, 4.624. The 4 is not 5 or more, it's actually less. So we, can, we can't round up, we have to round down. 4.62, two decimal places, as you can see. The 4 couldn't push up, so we just round down. 4.62, we've rounded down because the 4 is less than 5. Once again, round off to two decimal places. Where are the two decimal places? There they are. So we look to the number on the right. There it is. And we ask, are you 5 or more? Yes, I am. 7 is larger than 5. So this will be pushing this number up. 7.3. Four. So the 7 pushes the 1 on its left up and becomes 33, becomes 34. Thanks to the 7, it gave us a push. So we round up 7.3376 to two decimal places, 7.34. In these two, we're going to be asked to round off to the nearest whole number. The nearest whole number is of course we're talking here. So 30.42 nearest whole number. We want to change 30.42 to make this a whole number. We ask the one on the right, can you push us up? Can we round up? I'm less than 5. No you can't. So it just rounds down as 30. 30 or 30 by itself without the point. 30.42 equals to 30. We couldn't round up, so we have to round down because the 4 was not strong enough. It is not 5 or more. Last one. 53.675. Round off to the nearest whole number. This is the whole number. We ask our friend on the right, can you help us out? Can you round us up? 6 is larger than 5, so yes, it's got the muscles to push us up. 53.675 rounds up to nearest whole number becomes 54. So as you can see, it always follows the same concept. We look to the number on the right, can it push us up or does it round down? This is the concept. As I said earlier, please, please, please get it right. Make sure you practice. It's very important. And one last thing, whenever you are working with decimals, and you have a long answer or a long working out, don't round off until the end. Please, make sure you remember that. When you're working with your calculator or you're working with decimals, don't round off your answers until you reach the end. If you round off your answer in the middle of the working out, it's going to stuff up the end and you're going to get the wrong answer. Always round off right at the end, not in the middle of your working out. Very important rule. I'll leave you with that. Easy, straightforward, follow the rules, and as always, make it clear to you, if you follow the rules, you won't ever make a mistake.